And now everyone, put your hands together and give a warm welcome to your host, Jeff Plank. Ah. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Welcome to the 24-hour film project presentations of this year's uh, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame 8. Thank you all for coming out. You guys excited? Yeah. All right. Thank you for joining us here on campus. And also, I give a welcome as well to those of us joining us online in our live stream. I'm Jeff Plank, the program manager, the film Bachelor of Science degree program. And I am very excited to share with you guys uh, some of the great projects that have been submitted in this year's challenge. And I'm looking out here today and I see a lot of our participants here, which is fantastic. I'm sure you're all uh, waiting in anticipation of what is about to come. But you guys are so intimately familiar with what this process is. And the rest of us who are joining us online or who have gathered this morning for these presentations may not know what all you guys have endured. So if you would indulge me for just a few minutes to talk about what's happened over the past couple of days, starting with last Friday. We had a kickoff event around one o'clock on Friday the 10th, where we rolled out the rules and the process for what you guys uh, have done for us today. So we went over some paperwork, uh, students gathered together to uh, formulate teams, register your teams. Uh, we went over uh, some of the things that you would have to do, like fill out releases and uh, music licensing agreements and things like that, critical to any project. Um, but more importantly, we set out some rules and uh, requirements that your projects would need to have. So first of all, you guys needed to make a two to seven minute short film with some required elements, a prop, a line of dialogue, and a genre. And with the theme this year of Hall of Fame 8 being technology, we chose that you should have the uh, prop as a computer being featured in your project, a line of dialogue being, I've seen things you people wouldn't believe, and the genre of science fiction. So that all sort of falling into the theme for our Hall of Fame 8 this year. Um, so with those sort of minimal requirements, oh, also there was an alternative option, I should mention. Uh, you had the sci-fi genre, or you could alternatively volunteer to pick from our film canister another genre that you would be uh, limited to adhering uh, your film to. So those are kind of the basic requirements. But one more big rule, that all of the process for your film, the writing, the producing, the casting, the rehearsing, the location scouting, and filming and production and post-production of your projects would take place within a 24-hour period, not a small feat. So with that meeting, that kickoff meeting ending around 2 o'clock with some questions, we set you loose so that you could go about that entire process over those next 24 hours and return to full sale at two o'clock on Saturday with your completed projects. So amazing, the work that you guys were able to complete. I'm very proud of everything that you guys were able to accomplish. And unfortunately, in the confines of our session today, it is not possible for us to watch all of those amazing projects that you guys created, but I would like to take a moment to recognize all of you that were involved in these projects. So if you are a team leader, a team member, a, a cast member or an actor or anyone that was involved in these projects, if you could please stand up now. Come on, I can see you all out there. Stand up. It's a big group that's here. Congratulations on all of the work that you accomplished. Amazing. Amazing, guys. Fantastic. That's a great group. You guys are looking great. So, we have one more missing piece of this puzzle here. We have our esteemed panel that's joining us here today. Let me come over here. Indeed. We've got a great panel that uh, most of whom participated in the, the judging process. Let me take a moment to uh, introduce them first uh, in no 
particular order. We have the uh, um, Hall of Fame three inductee and uh, sound mixer extraordinaire, Mr. David Farmer. Welcome. <laughs> Hall of Fame five inductee and second assistant director on major motion pictures, Mr. Larry Katz. <laughs> and television. Very good. We also have film graduate, uh, story producer on shows like Master Chef and uh, The Riveras. We have Mr. Ricardo Ramos joining us. <laughs> Welcome. And last but certainly not least, our newest Hall of Fame inductee, writer, director, editor, Mr. Stephen C. Miller. Welcome. And congratulations. All right, fantastic. So over the past few days, there have been several films that have emerged as some of the top contenders in this challenge. So we're going to screen those here today and give them some accolades for their achievements. We'll take a little bit of time uh, for our panel to offer some feedback or some questions from the crowd as well. All right. You guys ready to get this started? Okay. So our first film, let me come around, let me get out of the way. Oh gosh, did my computer go to sleep? I bet it did. The one thing we didn't count on. Sleep mode, right? All right. Okay, so our first film is from Team Guardians of Justice. And it is entitled Perfectus. So let's take a moment to watch their submission. All right. Video incoming. We don't have sound. Let's restart. I'll restart. All right. Coming in five. Are you sure I'm going to like this? Yeah, babe. You're going to love it. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's fight is a very special bout between two very special men. On my left, we have Detective Mitchell Polchak. He was one of the police officers recently caught trying to infiltrate our little mom and pop operation. On my right, we have his partner. Fucking cunt, motherfucker! Detective Marcus Manson. This man single-handedly put five of our brothers in the hospital before he could be subdued. To be sure, we have a vicious battle. We're gonna introduce some liquid courage. You've never seen anything like this. 
I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Earth. This is perfectus. A combination of poisons from the Amazon and other performance enhancing substances. It'll turn the most civilized men into feral beasts. The winner gets the antidote. Very dramatic science fiction project. Very good. Team Guardians of Justice. So, uh, any feedback from the panel that you'd care to offer? Uh, really ambitious, you know, really well done, guys. You know, a uh, lot of production value, a lot of extras, a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, a couple of things, you know, where I come from, a couple of things that make me, 
nervous. You have a, a weapon there in public. So I hope, you know, really want to discourage you guys mm -hmm. from doing that. You know, Matt, I hope you did it in a safe and mm -hmm. controlled way. Always. But we don't mess around with that in this day and age and the climate that we're in. You know, uh, you, in the real world, we have, uh, if we're going to use weapons in public, we have police that are there and they know that we're going to be there. So just hope you're happy uh, that you were safe about that. Um, uh, just, you know, again, from where I come from with the extras, if there's no dialogue happening, they can be vocal. You know, I know that we say that the extras have to pantomime, um, but that's if the, if the actors are speaking and we don't want to overlap on their dialogue. But in that case, I think you would have got a more natural performance. And maybe nobody but an AD would be watching the background, but, you know, they could be cheering and shouting and it would have added a little bit more maybe to it. Um, so, but, but besides that, I mean, really outstanding, outstanding. Given time constraints, maybe not enough time in post to get those sound effects back in there that we might have liked. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, who will count against that for a 24-hour thing? I personally liked the setup of the line because hmm. it, it didn't just come out of nowhere. Yeah. It, just, it was set up and delivered, and I really loved that. Very good. Yeah, I, I think as to what Larry was saying, is the production value is really great when you can get that many people in the place. And I think... Um, I, I also, I actually really like the opening shot of bringing us into the, was it a bar uh, yeah. or what it was, but um, you know, anytime you can pull the audience in right away with something interesting and for the audience to kind of look at and, and keep them engaged, you know, when you have a attention span as, as small as 10 seconds uh, for most audience members now, it's to pull them in immediately with something cool is important. So I think that to me is, is a great idea to do something like that right off the bat. Uh, I also thought with the extras, um, just a quick critique, is that I think you had the extras there and you probably didn't use them enough. Um, I liked, there was like a few crowd reaction shots, but if you got them, show them, you know, I mean, show what you got back there. Um, but otherwise, I thought it was really ambitious. Uh, you know, I love action, obviously. So two guys pummeling each other is in my wheelhouse. <laughs> um, so I thought you guys did a really great job there. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun for 24 hours. Good job, guys. And due to those stunts. <laughs> but yeah, I agree absolutely with you guys. The attention to detail, considering it's a 24-hour film project, like the screen when he gets scanned and you see the eye or the liquid, everything looks pretty cool for a 24-hour film fest. And props to the producers and the coordinators, to all the releases for the extras. And just a quick um, suggestion for your action, the fight scene just cut it a, a bit faster to make it more like exciting and maybe get rid of a few like shots here and there. But it was, I, I, I enjoyed it very much. Congrats. Just a, I mean, I know to everybody that participated, you know, awesome. You, you want to be filmmakers, you have to make films. Uh, you know, like the rest of your class projects, you know, you're learning. This isn't going to be the best film that you ever make. You're going to learn from this. You're going to get better. So, you know, congratulations for everybody that participated. And that shows, you know, you, you have what it takes. You keep doing that, you're going to get better and better. So, um, you know. That's a great point. I mean, it's a, great, it's, a, it's a great point even when you get to where you're making big movies, is that you have to realize that nobody's going to, not everybody's going to like your movies. <laughs> and so you have to be willing to accept that criticism uh, and figure out how can you make your next movie better based on some of those critiques that you feel are, are worthy, you know, because some people are whatever, just haters. But for the most part, you know, people are really watching your movie and want to enjoy it. So if they have something that they're feeling could be a little better, I take those kind of things to heart. You know, I, I really do kind of study those things and think, okay, what can I do the next time to really grab that person, um, even if it is one person. So uh, they're a voice for a lot of people. Indeed. Indeed. Thank you, guys. And, and also thank all of you guys for what you've done for this film. So... For Team Guardians of Justice, do we have a team leader who would like to come up? Very good. I don't know how many other people, maybe by hands, are Guardians of Justice. Okay, not too bad. Why don't you guys uh, come on up front here? Who, whose hood did you dent, by the way? I want yeah, the know. Buick got dented. <laughs> I take my car to the shop. Yeah, no, it carries. I don't know where she's at. Oh, okay. You guys know if you uh, rent a car and buy the insurance, you can no, dent you the see. heck out of it. <laughs> yeah, I just wasn't sure if we could all fit up. So... For our first award for the Guardians of Justice and Perfectos, Perfectus, 
perfect us. Cool. I know you guys. Every, every Friday night at the flagpole, they perfect. No, they don't do that. <laughs> so for their film, we would like to honor them given uh, the fight scene and how the line and the computer was used so very prominently as a bludgeoning device. <laughs> we Love that. give you the award of best use of prop or line. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, guys. C congratulations. Indeed. Great work. Hey, good action. And fighting and stunts. Yeah, we really like that you use the computer to bash, bash me in the head with. Awesome. Good work. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. I want my computer back, too. Are we doing a picture now, or is that not happening now? Yeah, yeah. thanks, dude. Awesome. Is there a picture now up here? Later. Okay, great. Well, thank you, guys. Yes, please. Feel free to yeah, man. be congratulated. Amazing work. Yeah, good job. All right, up next, our second film that we'll be watching is from Team Something Stupid, and it's entitled Hold On. All right. Two years and ago, that's not the way I wanted that to go. One more time. Here we go. Two years ago, I moved 1,308 miles away from home. At first, I thought it would have been the hardest thing I had faced, but soon after, I realized it's not so different from being at home. Being here in school makes it a lot easier to be alone. I always liked being alone, but at home, I always thought my parents nagging on me to do chores and being involved in school. Being in college allows me to do everything I did at home, but at my own free will. When I first applied to school, we had to find a different apartment and we were randomly selected a roommate. I was totally okay with this because it was a chance for me to make my first college friend and it would make the whole experience a little bit better. Although, the roommate I was assigned to ended up falling through. I was okay with this too because I was able to keep Nancy. Nancy and I have had all the best times together now. I can still be alone, but in a way, it's like someone's there. The idea of loneliness has always intrigued me. Going out is now more restrictedly reforming than it ha ever has been. The lights and the sounds soothe me and excite me over and over again. I have read more books in the past three months than I have in my whole time I was in high school. I lose myself in those books. I travel to new places that take me away from my reality. I've seen things people wouldn't believe, and I've done things no one could understand. I've learned so much this year. I learned about life and hope loneliness and sorrow, and I learned to how to love myself. I learned that being alone was the only thing that made me happy. kind of movie an emotional roller coaster <laughs> <laughs> all right what do you um yeah sorry. please since it's a great opportunity for me to talk about sound use um uh we're not really discounting you know the use of sound really on a 24-hour project but what i want to point out about this one is it's vo and music only and i thought what you guys did was brilliant especially given you have a constraint. Like in the real world, you may give it a time frame to get a project done that's got to air. And what you guys did was work within your limitations and made a project that I think is as is, is, is ready for air as anything I would have seen. It was, it was really, really well done. So I appreciate your use of sound and, and recognizing that, you know, trying to record on the day and edit it in 24 hours would be really difficult to get something that people would like, you know, and watch. But this felt really polished to me, and I want to tip my cap to you for that. I don't know if it was on purpose or not, yeah, but, it, but it really, it really <laughs> stood out. Showed a lot of restraint. It's short. There's, you know, basically one actor and, uh, one cat and one other guy at the end. Um, but 
you know, if you guys have, have had me in class, you know, I, I believe that we're, we're all here in our jobs in film production to get the best performance, to allow the director time to get the best performance. And the one shot of the guy where we're looking in his eyes and you tell stories in film in the eyes, you know, that was a performance. That You could see that there was something going on there. And so to take the time to, to get that natural performance, you know, that if you get a good performance, it's a good movie. You know what I mean? And so that was... That one shot for me, you know, was one of the most natural artistic performances that I saw in any of the projects. So, good job. Yeah, I think this is, you know, obviously we work in a very visual medium, uh, and so to to take that opportunity to show something visually, um, and going back to the audio portion of it, um, I find that most shorts I watch, uh, it's hard to watch because the audio is takes me out of it, and I thought this was really smart to keep you in the movie, to keep you in, you know, what they were trying to get across, and very simply done. Again, it's like within constraints. You're, you know, I've been given 13 days to make movies before, and you got to figure out how do you make it. And to me, this is a very strategic way to get, you know, your story across. And visually, very pretty, uh, and with the sound on top of that, is something that you can just listen to the whole time without being broken or, or brought out of what they're doing. It, it's important, uh, you know, it's, it, people uh, tend to get taken out with, with music, and I think, so music can bring you in or it can take you out, and I thought this brought you in completely. Those are a great choice. Yeah, very visually uh, tasteful and poetic. I loved the writing. I got goosebumps, and same with that shot, the close-up. And I have a question. Is the voice over the same person who did the acting? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. It, it, it was great. Um, what else? Yeah. And it's a perfect example of less is more. You know, you were effective, like these guys said, and the length of it was great, too. Because sometimes, you know, short films tend to f start feeling very long. And this one was, like, perfect, I think. Congrats. Indeed. Yeah. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> Team something stupid. Who's represented today? Yeah, come on down. Watch your step. Connor and what's your name? Sam. Sam and Connor, fantastic. So for your work in this year's film festival and for the performance and the uh, engaging uh, film that you guys made, we'd like to honor you with the best acting Oh, congratulations, guys. Indeed. Well done. Um, but before you go, as we forgot to do last time, what I forgot was Q&A. Does anyone have any other questions, either from the panel or from the audience, that they'd like to ask? Team something stupid? <laughs> get back All right, they're out. Oh, wait, we have one question. Sam, get over You have here. a mic? Or I can relay the question if necessary. Give you a mic. Yep. Give you a mic, Rachel. Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> I know this is a film festival and they're screening our films today, but I, I can't dismiss what this film was about, suicide. So was there a story behind that? Was this based on a true story? I mean, I just have to touch on that. Not a true story, but um, basically we took the idea of someone who... We another mic. <laughs> Do we have another mic? Or can we just... No, oh, here's another mic. We are not streaming. A, not exactly a true story, but we took the idea of someone who likes just to be alone, that they figured if they're alone completely, they'll be completely content and happy with life. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Any other questions? Great. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. And don't forget, guys, it's called editing, so don't have to use every single shot that you shot. And they did a, a great job with that, you know. I know it, you got to fall out of love with your shots and fall in love with your movie, and, you know, sometimes less is more. So they, they did a really good job with that. Awesome. All right. Project number three that we have for you is from a team HAF called Overdue. All right.
They are coming, Mariah. Who's there? Hello? Okay. They're here. What? Hide. Hello, Mariah. I'm glad to see you've escaped. Hello? Unfortunately, I cannot tell you everything, but I will explain everything as much as possible. You may call me the librarian. I'm sure that you're very confused right now, Mariah. The two that broke into your apartment are a part of a large group of people that are after something that you carry. What are you talking about? There is a book inside your bag that you aren't aware of. The book is mostly unimportant. What is important, however, is what it contains. How did I get this? An associate of mine called the author slipped it into your bag earlier this morning. Why? Because we had no other option. You were selected randomly out of individuals at the library this morning to complete a task for us. What if I don't want to complete your task? That is no longer an option for you, Mariah. Now that they know you have the book, they will not stop hunting you until they capture you or you complete the task. You need to start moving again. They will be close to finding you by now. Once you are safe again, I will give you further instruction. Why should I go? Just keep moving, Mariah. I doubt that they will risk attacking you in public, but you shouldn't stay in one place for long. Go now. I can hear them. Whatever you do, do not listen to anything they try to say to you. Good luck. I'm assuming you were speaking to the librarian just now, or whatever ridiculous name he's come up with. But I must say, it's finally a pleasure to meet you, Mariah. Don't be afraid. I'm, not, I'm only here to speak to you. And what do you want? I just came here to introduce myself and apologize. All we need is the damn letter. You said you weren't here for the letter. It's not about what I said. If you give me the letter, you can just go home. Look, I think we got off on the wrong foot. Go home and forget about this. So let me think about what I've said. Just think about what I've said. Thank you, Mariah. Come on in. Hello, Mariah. What the hell was in that letter? Nothing you need to worry about. Power off.
overdue. The credits were slightly overdue there. Just <laughs> what do you guys think? Great. I mean, uh, another really ambitious uh, project. You know, some like all of your projects should. There's some really good stuff, and there's some stuff that didn't work as well. Um, you know, I think that uh, the end of the alley scene, you know, and the knife was a little bit on the nose, uh, and you know, maybe could have cut some of that part out. And also, you know, we saw that the editing got a little jumbled in there in the alley scene. Again, in 24 hours on a student film, you know, these are small critiques. Take it and you'll do better next time. Uh, one of the things that we loved at, uh, was, you know, first of all, you got the location, the library location, awesome. And, uh, you know, we love the, uh, the shot tracking with the, with the books in the foreground. You know, that was a, that was a very polished shot. Um, and, you know, we love, we, we... Yeah, we were both looking at each other. We, as soon as that appeared, I looked, we both looked at the same time, like, did you just see that? Yeah. That was pretty cool. <laughs> so that part was awesome. Uh, yeah, you know, um, performance-wise, you know, maybe we'll work with the actors a little bit more and, you know, get a little bit more of a natural performance. Uh, but with the time constraints that you have, uh, you know, really, really awesome. Yeah, I thought the, uh, the actual look of it was really cool. I thought this... It's one of it was really polished looking, especially some of the exterior shots. I thought it looked really great. The library stuff looked really great too, um, and so I think it was uh, definitely had a you know little jumpiness here and there. But I mean, like it's 24 hours, so uh, I realize it's difficult to get the right cuts in the right places and get it in in time. Uh, <clears throat> but like Larry said, I think you know there's certain things that you just want to make sure that you're looking out for, and that's you know hitting the audience over the head too hard with certain points and you know, the knife thing probably was. The only thing that I felt was just kind of saying, yeah, that's a little bit too heavy. But otherwise, you know, it really, it really was really cool. I thought I liked it. Great project. Yeah, cool story. Yeah. yeah. Cool story, cool, cool use of music. Um, yeah, it's almost like John Carpenter soundtrack. Yeah, yeah right. Right, we escaped cool. from New York, I think, at one point. I mean, just audio, a couple of things. You know, I'm, I realize you guys have are very limited time constraints, but, you know, in the alley, you know, if you could do some fade-ups or fade-downs on the dialogue so it doesn't pop in and off or maybe fill it with some background noise, you know. You can always fill it and then lower the level if, it's, if it's, you feel like it's getting in the way, but it just keeps it from sounding jumpy. Um, and if you're given a task, like, to put a line in, make sure you can hear the line. Um, you know, that, that one line got a little covered up by the car by, you know, but and I realize you're, again, you're operating within time constraints. That, but that car goes by, don't stop rolling. Okay, you know, still rolling, wait for the car to go by, and let's pick it back up from that line. You know, it takes half a second, you know, don't say cut, just keep rolling, okay, let the car go by, and let's do that line one more time. You, you know, don't forget, you know, once you're in coverage, you don't need the whole dialogue from the very beginning to the very end. Think editorially, you're cutting back to that two shot, and you can just have him say that line over again. So, you know, these are things that you learn as you get more experience. So uh, don't, uh, you know. No, but what Larry said is important. Think editorially. I mean, that's how you make these movies in short amount of time. Is the only way to do it is to edit the movie in your head before you even get there. Uh, so you know where you want to be at all times and how quick. You can just be way more efficient than just showing up and deciding, how are we going to put our cameras here today? <laughs> So to have that in your head before you get there, even on a 24-hour period, you know, on that drive over there, planning the shots out before you get there and is a good point. Editorial is, is important. Um, so it's good. But that, you know, to, to, to have them redo that line would have cost you no time at all, and you would have had it, you know, clean. All right, thank you, guys. So Team H-A-F, who's here? All right, come on down to the stage, please. All the way up onto the stage. The librarian. <laughs> Please st step up. Are you a team leader? Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah. Who's our team leader? Oh, you're. Ah, you, I, I thought you were coming to take a picture. Okay. Cool. So for your work on some excellent cinematography, we're awarding Team HAF and overdue. Congratulations. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't even hang on. Yeah, cool, man. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations to all of you, indeed. And any questions for the team about their project? I have a hand down here, if we could have a microphone towards the front. 
And then you guys are going to have to tell me who's going to answer. And I'll pass this off. I know, yeah. We'll see. All right, incoming, very discreetly. There's now a microphone. It's amazing. How did that happen? Hey, guys. Um, I was really curious about the actual book you used for the prop. Did it have any significance? Yeah, this is it's me. Yeah, here. Um, there was a little bit of significance to it, not as much in the story, more as like a Easter egg sort of deal. I've put that book in every film that I've made for a very long time, so yeah. Cool. It's like your doves. Nice. Any other questions? Over there. I'm looking for, the, okay, it's happening. You guys don't know it, but it's happening. Over here. We're behind you. Thank you. Hi, how did you get the library? Too late. It's still late. Hey, that's it for There you go. Hi, um, so oh, do you want to answer? So we filed a standard uh, location agreement. So um, they went over, they talked to the, the people at the library, and then we sent out um, uh, the agreement. And then they, they replied right back to us. So yeah, they, they did that. <laughs> you guys kind of got lucky, given the time frame yeah. that they were willing to cooperate. And you guys ended up there very early in the morning, I think is what happened, is how you were able to do that. Yeah. yeah, OK, very good. Cool. Other questions? Clearly a very coordinated effort from this team with some of their logistics. Here we go, Hello. another question. How's it going, guys? Um, just curious about all the projects. Were you all using the same cameras? It's C300, 5D, what were you using? Uh, we're using the C100. Well, we were using the C100. And I guess an important note, note to point out is where when we assigned these projects or we opened up this process, we did not, as Full Sail, we did not provide specifically any of that gear to the team. So you guys had to wrangle all of that stuff on your own and figure out where that was going to come from. And that applies to all the teams. So uh, great hard work in getting those things done. Any other questions? All right. I think that's good. Congratulations once again to Team HAF. All right, another film to watch. We have from Team Broken Mirror. I'm not hearing any A's. Is Broken Mirror here? All right, cool. We've got some Broken Mirror. We have their film, Team, uh, excuse me, Dream Job. Dream Job from Broken Mirror. All right. What was once only captured using a film crew in a piloted helicopter can now be captured by enthusiasts with a handful of cash. Hey! Hey! Good to see you! <laughs> How was the flight? It was great, you know, besides the fact that the kids were kicking my seat the entire time. Oh, uh, but hey, I'm just glad that you're here because I have a lovely surprise for you. No, you didn't. What'd you yes. get me? Well, it's a surprise. Come on, tell me. I'm not going to tell you. Andrew. It's a surprise. What'd you get me? Come on, please tell me. Uh-uh. Andrew. <laughs> okay, so where is it? Oh, uh, we're going to go home and go check it out. Okay, cool. Let's awesome. go. Awesome. Let's go. Hey, Matt. What's up, man? What are you up to? Uh, Section 8 told me to uh, edit a dream for this guy named Andrew. I don't know, his uh, girlfriend slid her throat right in front of me. Hang on, seriously, she committed suicide right in front of me. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so like, they wanted me to do like a good dream for like, kind of like when they first met or like a year after they met or something. Damn. Yeah. So what are you up to? Nothing, just uh, pedophilia. It's just teeth like, fetish. What section are you in again? Section 4. Yeah, uh, you we're do doing nightmares. You do nightmares in nightmares, section 12? Like, I thought that was until like section 15. Section 15 is uh, sophilia dreams. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are you doing right now? Oh, it's a well.
that we do all day. Yeah, kind of. Uh, it's, Man, I, I'm good I, doing these dreams. I can't do those dreams. Man, those aren't even dreams. Man, I'm telling you. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe, man. Yeah, yep. that's crazy, man. I don't, I, yeah. well, still green, man. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. It's work. I'm editing this dream of a kid who wants to be a dream editor. Just look. Job. Very creative. Great story. Um, you know, there's good things and bad things in all the movies, okay? So, uh, you know, the it, we felt like, you know, you got a little lost in the coverage in the office where there was the two guys. And there was some eye line stuff that was a little wacky. So, I mean, you want to really, you know, blocking, shoot animatics. I know you had 24 hours, but really take time and make sure, you know, this guy's looking that way, and then this guy's looking that way. And it was a little, took us out of it a little bit. Uh, but the dream stuff was awesome. You know, that the, at the beginning, loved the opening shot, pushing in on the car. That was a great way to start it off. Um, but, you know, just in the office. And then also we hear a lot of voices of people in the office, but we don't see them. So, you know, I don't know, maybe put a couple more desks and a couple more people in there, or don't have so much background noise, you know what I mean? But overall, awesome. Yeah, super creative. Um, it was really, really funny too, which is good. You know, you, you want to mix some of that horror stuff with the funny stuff, and it was a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> I thought, I also thought that, you know, just some of the, some of the issues in the room were what they are. Uh, I, think it, I think it's important for everyone that whenever you're shooting in a room like that, you want to give something on the walls, no matter what, shooting against blank walls is always tough. Even though it's, I get you're in the mind space, I think you still want to try to put something behind them to get some depth, pull them off the wall, get some depth from the walls you know, to the subject, so that way we're focusing on the subject, not on the entire space, um, and really sort of give the audience something to, to gravitate to. Um, but I, other than that, you know, I, I would, the, the horror stuff was, was rocking. It was cool. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't like toes at all, so <laughs> it's hard to watch. Thank you. Um, but yeah, great job. But yeah, really cool concept. I can totally see this as a TV show, or I'd love to see more, like more of these crazy dreams. But yeah, maybe no, no toe dreams. Um, but yeah, again, Larry and I keep looking at each other, uh, just framing the importance of framing it. It's such a basic thing. Like one example of the first time we see the guy typing, it's so nicely framed, very centered. And then the next guy, it's a little off. So just little things like that to keep in mind. Very creative project that uh, we would like to honor with an award. So if <clears throat> Team Broken Mirror would like to come down. <clears throat> All right, come on, yeah, come on down, guys. Very good, so for uh, all of the laughs, the humor, the science fiction, the cool story, we would like to honor you with the Best Writing Award. Very good. Congratulations. Indeed, guys. Congratulations. All right, do we have any questions for Team Broken Mirror? One right here, yeah. Uh, I'm just really, like, really curious, like, was this something that y'all actually thought about, or was this a concept that one of y'all had for a long time that you really just wanted to finally do? Well, that's okay. We're hoping someone would ask that question. We actually had multiple ideas that we filmed that day, but, um, so for example, the car scene in the beginning was the original short film. The ending didn't work out, so we scrapped it. 
Then the foot thing was the second short film, but the beginning didn't work out, so we scrapped it. <laughs> so we kind of worked around it, so we didn't feel lost with our actors, because they spent like hours to help us out, so we felt bad, so we decided, you know what, how about we just keep the footage, but work around it, which was the whole dream idea. So. Writing and post, very good. <laughs> Bringing the whole story together from all that. Awesome. Another question? Yes. Right here. So I think this is a question we're all thinking. Um, who licked the foot? <laughs> <laughs> well, Anonymous. Uh, if, here, Sonia, hold this for a second. All right, so <laughs> it was my feet, by the way. But if you take his hand and you lick your hand, it looks like I licked his hand. So that's what we did. He held my foot, licked his hand. The guy's not here. Oh, yeah, the guy that licked my hand, his hand was. <laughs> so, yes. Basically. Trick photography. Very good. Other questions for Team Broken Mirror? Okay, once again, guys, congratulations. Yeah. It's a good point, guys. You know, you might think, oh, it's just two people in a room. But that's, it's really easy to get lost in there. You have to really plan that out. You know, you don't want to be standing there on the day and trying to diagnose these eye lines and all that stuff. It's, not, it's harder than you think. You can't just say, oh, yeah, it's, just two, it's easy. It's two people in a room. There's nothing that's easy until you've got experience, you know, doing it. So, you, you know, it's, it's easy to get lost in that, in that coverage. So. And you guys did your own sound design for the um, nightmare sequence. I appreciate you guys going for that. Not as easy as it looks, is it? <laughs> Blowing in microphones and all that stuff. So anyway. And creepy. <laughs> creepy toes. Very good. All right. So we do have one more award to give for best overall film. So we've got one more to go. But, sorry, Lighting Cue, we've already seen it. <laughs> Here today, so we will not be rewatching it. It's from one of the films that we have already seen. So, if we could please bring up the winner of our best overall film and their team, the Guardians of Justice with Perfectus. Okay, come on. Up, guys. I don't know who this goes to specifically. You guys could share that out. Thank you. Yes, there's one statue, so you guys love to fight over that. Well, now there's two. Yes, congratulations. Absolutely, guys. Once again. So hang tight. Close by, because we did not do any Q&A previously, and we'll get a chance to, sorry, to talk with Team Guardians of Justice. So any questions? out there for the team. Okay, we've got a question over here. I see a hand. Hold on, we'll get uh, mics in all of their appropriate places. Oh, I going. stand up? Oh, uh, I just got one question. How do y'all get all those people in that like short amount of time? Because that's, that's a lot of them. That's a great question. It started with literally, uh, I wanted to work with some of the younger, people from the younger months, and they're, they're a little hungrier to get out there and do more. So once I started working with some of these guys in month three, four, and five, uh, I asked them to get some friends, and they got their friends, and they got their friends. We ended up with, I think, like 20 or 30 extras and like 15, 20 crew members. So, And we got some people from the bar. We were very lucky. There's a place called The Spot, which is Longwood. in Longwood. It's a bar. And they let us use their back lot, which was closed off and everything. There was nobody else around, so we were very lucky in everything. So. Yeah, they gave us free food. Yeah, they gave us free food and yeah. booze. But <laughs> All right, so good networking and collaboration there, yeah. it sounds like. Other questions? Yes, down front, we have a hand. Um, uh, was it hard to direct and act at the same time? Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I mean, especially when you're doing such a demanding thing, like just, I was just getting my ass kicked the whole time, my butt kicked, sorry. Anyway, uh, but it, yeah, it was really hard. Um, but like I said, we had a really, really good crew 
even though, like I said before, they were very young in terms of uh, the film program, they all were making sure they killed it to try to do their best. So it, it, was, it was a lot easier than it has been in previous pop projects. But yeah, it was a little rough. Thank you. Thank you so much. Other questions? While well, we have the Guardians present. So um, how did you guys plan on doing like the action shots? Did you have to work closely with like your DPs to get those really? Yeah, um, me and Anthony are both former professional wrestlers. <laughs> so we kind of just knew how to go through it, I guess, and, and knew how to uh, play off of each other. And I mean, he's a much bigger guy than me, so it was pretty easy to say I was going to get my butt kicked the whole time. Um, but yeah, you, you pretty much just go through the... Um, through the choreography of it, and then we just broke it up so that it'd be cleaner, and we'd, we would hoped it would uh, make the edit go faster, but it did not. The edit was hard to get through that, then that way. That's why we didn't have, we wanted to add a lot of things like uh, post sound as far as the sounds of the punches and wow. the crowd. We had, we had, we all had mentioned the crowd earlier. We had uh, a lot of wild tracks of the crowd screaming and stuff like that. And we were going to add that, but we didn't get a chance to. So we're a little upset about that. But it still still came out good and proud of it. So You should be, yeah. Great work. All right. I think that's it for questions. Congratulations once again. Good job, Matthew. Good work. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Uh, Great you. work, guys. Yeah. I think that's a third awesome. Hand I got. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get any Jameson. All right, so that's all of the awards we had to give out today. And once again, I'd like to say congratulations truly to everyone that participated in this process. You guys put in so much work, even in that short bit of time, to be able to create any of the projects that you guys made. So great job, well done. I don't know if you guys have any other comments about the projects. You, uh, you sure? know, just um, people that didn't get recognized, you know, it doesn't matter moving forward. Uh, they got those trophies. It doesn't mean anything for, you know, your career versus their career moving forward. Great recognition, great work. Keep making movies, keep making movies, keep getting better at it. And, uh, you know, um, it's, nobody did a, a bad job uh, you know, somebody has to be recognized, and again, it doesn't affect anything that happens after you leave here. Uh, so everyone now is reset to zero, and uh, you know, uh, great job. You know, you gotta, you, you want to get better. You gotta keep making films. So keep it up. Keep entering stuff as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, you've got to get your chops up, right? And so getting these things done, you know, hitting a deadline and getting it done alone is the start, first step forward. So if you guys hadn't participated, you, the next thing you do would have been the first thing. So the next thing you do is is just moving forward. So I applaud you all. Yeah, Thanks great for job. Taking it on. Really good. Really good. All right, so thank you all so much for attending today. I'd also, uh, once again, like to thank our uh, panelists for coming out today. David uh, Farmer, we've got Larry Katz, Ricardo Ramos, and Stephen C. Miller. Awesome for your participation. We uh, really appreciate all the valuable knowledge you've been able uh, to pass off to the students today. So once again, thanks, everyone, here at Full Sail University and joining us online. Have a great day and enjoy your Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, we have another session in this room that we need to prepare for, so please move to the...